Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah? Okay, inshallah. Um, hopefully my uh, speech is actually quite short. <laughs> inshallah. Um, I'll just start with a short dua. Um, sorry, can I just move this? It just feels like it's in my face. Okay. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqtatin min lisani. Yafqahu qawli. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakallahu khair, the organizers for having me and inviting me. Um, when I was actually asked to be part of this panel, I said to um, Brother Wahid, are you sure you want me to be on your panel? Uh, I'm actually not sure what I can um, offer. I was actually really surprised, so I was really nervous, and I was like thinking, right, what am I gonna talk about? What am I gonna talk about? What am I gonna talk about? Um, and I was given the topic to talk about barriers uh, that Muslim women face today, and having a background in mental well-being, um, and currently working with survivors of domestic abuse, sexual violence, and rape, I was thinking, right, okay, I could talk about, um, you know, the, the issues that, the lots of struggles and difficulties um, women are faced with. Um, and I thought, you know, this is actually not a new concept. Like Sister Herrera said, it's a struggle that we've had through the ages, throughout time. Um, it's a struggle that doesn't, you know, having barriers as Muslim women isn't just an issue that we're faced with in the West. It's a global issue. Um, you know, our struggles might be different to the sisters in Afghanistan or Iraq, but we still have struggles. Um, we're not, we, we're still human beings. And the one thing that binds us all globally is the fact that we're all women. <coughs> So, you know, I could talk about hardships of wearing hijab, I could talk about the struggles raising children, or I could talk about, you know, trying to strike balance between faith and between culture and the secular society that we live in. Um, you know, I could talk about the difficulties we have trying to access services um, that are sensitive to our needs, not only as women, but as Muslim women. Um, and I could talk about relationships, finding the right partner. Um, you know, that's the, that's the usual thing that I normally hear. So I thought really long and hard, what should I talk about? And I decided that I would talk about the struggle within ourselves, um, the self. Um, and I think personally, the greatest struggles that I've had is within myself. So I thought I'd share that personal journey with yourselves today, inshallah. Um, and I talk about the self, the self that we kind of push deep down into some recess of our body and we kind of put it in a straitjacket. And then what we do is we tie it up with the worldly needs, the expectations that people have and the demands that other people have. And then the pure self that holds our dreams and our hopes and our natural instinct to worship, to reproduce, we kind of have tied it up that if we actually released it and if we took off those shackles that we bind it in, we'd actually really rise. Um, I've kind of approached this topic not from a religious perspective, but I've approached it from a mental health perspective. So if I say something out of context, <coughs> please feel free to jump in and correct me. Inshallah, uh, may Allah forgive me if I make any mistakes. Um, but basically, when we live in a world where the woman's voice is ushered into silence, and it's shamed into silence, or even scared into silence, where we will find women that are beaten by their husbands, and they are told it's part of married life. <coughs> and we are told, those same women are told, you need to stay with your husband, because that's what us women do. And that some women are told that if you don't stay with that husband, other people will talk. And you will find sisters that have been raped and will not speak about their ordeal because they are too afraid that no man will ever marry them. And we will come across sisters that will isolate themselves because they feel worthless because they've been subjected of years and years to be told that they are so. 
And I can't really speak about other people's experiences because obviously confidentiality, I'm a counsellor. So I'll talk about my own experiences um, and what I've, what I've gone through in my own life. I am a sister, I am a daughter, and I'm a mother, but I also have to be a father. And I'll explain that later on. Um, but, you know, there's no doubt, as women, we, there is, we come with um, all those roles that we play in society come with their fair share of responsibility and expectations. And I didn't get here and where I stand here now by being silent. I didn't get here because I allowed people's blocks or the, the blocks that people create through their judgmental words or their cruel behavior stop me from moving forward. And the biggest thing that I learned in life is that when I stopped worrying about what other people think and what other people say and what other people feel, and when I started focusing on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requests of me, my life started to change. So what happens when we go through life, uh, what we do is we absorb what everything is going on around us. Either what people say to us, what people feel, what people think, rightly or wrongly, and that actually builds our personalities. It's something that I learned in counselling. It's like kind of... Um, when I sit in a, a, a counselling session with somebody, what I spend my time doing is I'm deconstructing the constructs that have been built around their personality. It's something called conditions of worth. And what happens is, is for example, um, you know, if somebody's told over and over again, do you know what, you can't sing. That person's going to believe, you know what, I can't sing, I'm not even going to attempt to try and sing. And if somebody's told, you know what, you know what, that sister over there, she's a really bad Muslim. Or she's told she's a bad Muslim because she doesn't wear hijab. Or she doesn't dress appropriately. She's going to think, you know what, I, I must be a bad Muslim. I'm not doing things right, so what's the point? Why should I do it? And what happens is, it goes back to the point of what I was saying, is those straight jackets that we find we put ourselves in, it's, it's the conditioning that we experience throughout life. And it's what we do is we start perceiving ourselves through the eyes of other people. And then what we do is we fill our lives with the lack of will to try or a life full of regret that we didn't try in the first place. And you know in Surah Rad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, Allah will not change the condition of people until they change what is within themselves. Five years ago, I found myself in a situation where I was having to raise my children by myself. Emotionally, I was completely broken. Um, and I was knocking on doors for support. I really was. I was knocking on doors for support and I did not find that support. I didn't. I didn't. I knocked on imams' doors. I knocked on... I was ringing people. I didn't find that support. And though my parents were there and they knew what I was going through, they then put a gag on me because they said, you know what, the shame of having a divorced daughter, how are we going to live with that? They really struggled. Alhamdulillah, you know, they've come around now. Mashallah, they are my biggest supporters now. Alhamdulillah. But at that time, you know, oh, our daughter's getting divorced. You know, you, you can't speak about it. You can't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. I had to pretend for, I think, two years that I was still married despite being divorced and despite being on my own. And um, I, I had spent a lot of years being conditioned and being told, you know what, I'm not good enough, that anything that I do is not right. And when I found myself being on my own, I thought, actually, I can't do this. I can't face these challenges that are in front of me. I, I just, I felt absolutely incapable to, to, to think any, any further than just day to day. And I think in that moment I learned something, that there comes a time, really, subhanAllah, there comes a time in our lives that we learn how truly alone we really are. 
and we learn that people will leave us and our children will grow up, people will die and we will learn that life will keep churning and changing and other people's lives will still be carrying on but there is only ever one constant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will not ever abandon us. You know they say that if he brings us to it, surely he will bring us through it. And you know, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, he really did. He really did. He sent me people. He sent people into my life. You know, they were the, my colleagues that I was working with. And their kindness and their support, it was a place that I was volunteering in. And they helped me find me again. The me that had got lost over the years, buried under expectations and circumstance. The me that, you know... I, I just wasn't who I was. And I came to the realization at that time that there was a real lack of support services uh, for Muslim women. And I realized actually, do you know what? We really need to do something about this. And rather than thinking that I'm gonna wait for somebody else to do something about it, there's, there's not enough support services for women, I actually did something about it. So I decided that I wanted to become a counselor. So, four years down the line, I'm nearly qualified, alhamdulillah, um, holding down a job, looking after my mother who became ill, and my son, battling my own lack of self-belief, my own anxiety, my own, sorry, I'm going to get emotional, my own low-level depression. I stand here now as an author, who's been published as a poet, as a writer, as a trainee counselor, as a mentor, as a mother, a father, a sister, and a daughter. May Allah bless you. And I say to you that the struggles and the hardships that we face do shape who we become. And I have some tips for you today inshallah that when we start learning we are capable we can achieve and we can start living and the greatest thing that I've learned in my training is that when we become aware of our own self and our own needs then we will become aware of other people's needs we'll be able to communicate better we'll be able to build better relationships and when we learn to be empathic there's a difference Sympathy and empathy is two totally different things. We need to be empathic. The Prophet ﷺ was empathic. Not sympathy, empathy. You feel what that person is feeling. You walk in their shoes and you sit with them at their level and say, I feel you. I feel you. Not, oh, you know. You'll be alright. Exactly. And it, it, things will get better. Things will get better. We've heard it all, haven't yeah. we? And when we're able to remove the conditions that people impose on us and the, the things that people tell us that we should or we shouldn't do, when we're able to remove those things, then we'll be able to see with clarity. <coughs> Inshallah. And these things, when we're able to do that, that builds our self-confidence. It builds our self-esteem and it builds our self-worth. <coughs> that we are worthy and we mean something to many people. And you know, we're the educators of the next generations, like Sister Effort said. And when we feel confident in ourselves, we're able to kind of deal with any, and I sincerely mean this, any hardship, any difficulty that comes our way, we say, yeah, I'm ready for this. I can take this on. I can do this because we, we've built ourselves up. We've built that resilience within ourselves. So like I was saying, just to conclude, the challenges that we face as Muslim women can be overcome if we strengthen our own selves as well as we strengthen our communities. Because we're not individual bodies. Like Sister Hamara said, it's a societal thing. If we strengthen ourselves, then we have to strengthen our societies as well. So the final reflection that I'll leave you with is be brave and be bold. Be kind to yourself as well as be kind to others. And there are so many, in the pe in so many people in the world that want to break us and tear us down. But we're strength in numbers. 
We really are, subhanAllah, we are strength in numbers. And if we build each other up through love and mercy, then we can, we can do anything. We really can. So let's not wait for someone else to make change. Let's make the change within ourselves and let's make change in society. Jazakallah khairan.